Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It is your favorite podcast here. Um, back at, at you with another episode, another great guest episode. Um, I'm one half of the pod fam here, and my name is Jenna Berglund. And I'm the other half, and my name is Cameron Swear. This week, you guys, we have on a banker, um, Brandon Bisick, Bisick? Bisick. I Bisick? think it's Bisick. Bisick. Okay. We are I literally so always sorry. say, I literally always say his last name wrong. Sorry, Brandon. Um, sorry, Brandon. But anyway, he is on you guys and he's going to be talking all about credit and money and savings and buying a house and buying a car mm -hmm. and pretty much all the things that we should have been taught in our um, late years of high school, early years of college that no one really knows. Nobody teaches all you. the questions, all yeah. the things that give you anxiety at night about growing up. We're going to cover them here. And yeah, I loved having him on. He answered so many questions I didn't even realize that I had Literally. and made it all pretty understandable because I feel like a lot of times I'm just like, what are the, what are people even talking right. about? I don't know what to do. I don't know what you're saying. I don't know anything. Yeah. And it can be o very overwhelming at times. So I, it was really nice to sit down and have a conversation with him and walking away from our little interview, I felt like I had a little bit more of a grasp on um, the future of adult life. Yes. I completely agree. Um, Brandon had, grew up mm, in a small town somewhere several hours Winter. away from Gettysburg. Winter. Thank you. But I was going to say that we know him because he now lives in Gettysburg. Um, we have been friends with him for a long time. I feel like we, we, we went to Life Flight. I remember we yeah, even Life Flight. And we're like hung time, out with him. Yeah. We're like, yeah. He's yeah, alive, all that stuff. Um, anyways, so yeah, known him for a long time. It was great having him on. We really appreciated all of his knowledge. And Brady and I recently bought a car and we had to take out a car loan. Um, and it was our first loan ever. So, well, I mean, we have a little bit in student loans, but like main, like first loan that we actually like, had to do anything mm -hmm. for. So that was, um, really interesting. And we learned a lot and I was like, you know what? Like people need to know this stuff. Like right. this is like, and we have a, such a young audience and I'm like, okay, let's bring them on. And even you guys, even if you're like 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years old, he talks about like credit score and like different things that you probably did not know about your credit score and like what's hurting you. Um, things that like literally like are not wrong to do financially, but it's mm -hmm. actually like hurting your credit. Um, right. so super interesting. You're going to learn something probably no matter what age you are. So don't just like skip leave. on by. You're like, Oh, I've been in. Yeah. A oh, I bought a car. Forever. I bought a house. Um, no, we're going to, we're going to get into it and you guys are going to find out stuff that you probably didn't know. Um, tips and tricks so, for budgeting, saving, mm -hmm. all that good stuff. We yeah. really get into it and he gives us, oh, jeepers, Cameron. Not my fault. Anyway, gives us all the good info. So uh, without further ado, here is Brandon. Okay, Brandon, so excited to have you. Um, why don't you just go ahead and give us a one minute bio, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Brandon Besick. I live in Gettysburg, South Dakota, and I am a personal banker at Great Western Bank. I uh, open up accounts and I do loans, uh, consumer loans for like cars and like personal loans, like smaller loans. And I am married to my beautiful wife, who is a special education teacher at the Gettysburg School District. Oh, that's oh. so kind. <laughs> okay, so guys, I asked Brandon to be on here because he helped me get a car loan. And I was like, dang. I need to know more about, everyone needs to know more right. about this I feel stuff. like there's so much about the adult world that people yeah. just don't know and they don't even know where to start with information. And so. I was like, okay, because a lot of people are like our age or even younger. And I was like, people need to know this stuff. So, okay. So now that we know who you are, um, if you like, do you like coffee? Love it. Oh, okay, okay, good. I okay, thought you were going to say no. <laughs> um, we've had a few people on here because it's like coffee and a combo podcast. So we try to ask our guests, like, what do you like to drink? And someone were like, I don't like coffee. And yeah. I'm like, mm, that's boring. I only drink water. Um, okay, so what is <laughs> your favorite coffee drink? Um, it kind of varies. Like, during the summer, I just absolutely love iced coffee. I do. I just I drink it almost every day. And in the wintertime, I really like lattes. Okay, I have okay. a little latte machine at home, and I make Ooh. that and take it to work. So Ooh. I just absolutely love it. What kind of lattes do you make? Um, well, I, I make coffee and then like I'll froth some milk and then some like very, very like creamer and, you know, a little bit of sugar and stuff like that. And I'll mm. throw it on top. And like my favorite coffee is the Green Mountain uh, Caramel Vanilla Cream and Ooh. Butterscotch. I love Butterscotch. So, yeah, those are my two good favorites. Good stuff. Got good taste. Got good taste. I'm so glad you're so excited to tell us about coffee. Yeah, I also am. <laughs> I love it. I drink it every day for like eight years. So. Oh, my gosh. Does Emily like coffee? No, oh. unfortunate. <laughs> That's funny. 
All right. Well, we're going to jump into questions. Um, and we're going to just learn learn some stuff because I don't know any of any, any of this anything. stuff. Any this of is this gonna stuff. Be really good no, for yeah, it's going to be really good for you. Um, okay. So our first topic is going to be credit and we're going to talk all about credit scores. So can you just tell us how the heck credit scores work? Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, aren't you glad you learned about triangles in high school? Right. Yeah. You know? So, so um, my mom, or I grew up and my mom worked at the bank and the first thing that she made me do when I turned 18 was get a credit card and um like discover like the credit limit is always really small so you can um so like it's a thousand dollars okay so whenever you get a credit card um when you turn eight or, you know whenever you get it um you're gonna your credit score is gonna start out really low and as you continually uh, put money on it and you pay it off your credit score is gonna grow and but the one thing that just isn't taught to you is yeah if you pay your bill that's good but you know let's say you have a thousand dollar credit credit limit and you're putting $900 on that every time they see you as a liability, someone that's not going to, you know, what happens if we raise it to 5,000, are you going to be able to pay $4,800 mm -hmm. off every month? Um, so they recommend to keep that under 30% and that'll help your credit score grow. Like my, they say your credit score limits like 850 and my mom's is like 846. And, you know, so she, she's taught me all of this and now mine's, you know, at 800, my wife's is too. And it's just, you know, it, it just helps you get any type of loan, anything, your interest rates, all that. Yeah. So, um, it, unfortunately, it's it's really a priority to have, and it, it's just not taught to you, and it's a really no. unfortunate. Yeah, which is crazy because, like, when I was talking with you about getting our car loan, my credit score was above 700, and then it dropped to, like, 690. And you were like, okay, well, did you, like, not pay something off? Like, did you pay – like, was it – had I taken – what did you say, like, that 30% of your – Yeah, yeah, so, like – you know, if your credit score was, a, or if your credit limit was a thousand, I asked, yeah, them, credit are limit. you putting $900 on? Yeah. And, um, and I was like, stuff like that. and we figured out our credit, um, limit is like 5,000. And like, I'm pretty sure we never go over like a thousand sure. mm -hmm. anyways. And so we yeah. were like trying to figure out why mine dropped. It was like so weird. Anyways. And you were telling us all these little things were like, seriously, like we paid it off. Right. Like that could have affected it. Like that's so dumb, you know? So yeah, yeah that's super interesting. So like keep your credit, um, if you have of your credit limit, stay below 30%. 30%. That yeah. is, that is a good, and that's such like, um, an applicable little tip too. I feel yeah. like a lot of times you get into like the conversations about like finances and adult stuff and people are like, do this, 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 and this, and this, and this. And you're like, I don't even know how to do any of that. But I feel like just yeah. like the little tips that are like, okay, give me something simple. That's like black and white. And I can do that. I feel like that's one of those things. It's like, mm -hmm. it, it's easy to know and it's tangible to do. So that's right. really good. What are some other ways to build your credit? Um, you know, like you did, you said you got your car loan, just, just paying off your bills every month mm -hmm. and never be, if you're late on a credit, credit card payment, I mean, they're, they're just going to shoot it right down. Okay. Um, but like just paying off your loans and like, you know, this doesn't necessarily pertain to your credit score, but like it, it does, I guess. But like, let's say, um, I were to apply for a car. Um, when I go in there and I'm applying for this car, um, but I haven't paid my phone bill in four months, but I make my credit card payment. They see everything. Oh, okay. If you don't pay a phone bill or if you're late on your bills, you're more liable to not pay that car back. Oh, and okay. then they have to come and repo it from you. And that's just a liability issue. Yeah. So it's just paying your bills on time. That's that's literally the number one thing that people look for when they're when they're trying to give you a loan. Okay. That's super interesting. Okay, another question. You know, like when you pay your credit card, like you have to pay a certain percentage. It's like only pay like five percent or ten percent of like your whole bill like you owe twenty dollars on like an eight hundred dollar bill or whatever like mm -hmm. so say you pay the twenty dollars but you don't pay the full eight hundred dollars or whatever is that gonna knock your credit score because you're not paying it all off it will yeah. okay i was just wondering yeah, yeah yeah and then the one <laughs> terrible see if you use credit cards right they're amazing right they're absolutely amazing like i have uh chase credit card is through amazon because we buy a lot of stuff on amazon it's five percent cash back on everything on Amazon. Oh, that's awesome! So I've made I've made like one hundred and eighty bucks on Amazon in the last year just because. And right. I put my parents on it as well. So anytime they buy stuff, they use it, and then they pay me. So I'm getting paid for them to pay, buy stuff. Yeah, that's awesome. But if you don't if you don't pay your credit card bill, like let's say you know on a normal loan you have from like four to ten percent, um, but a credit card credit card uh, interest rates are typically like 20%. Mm -hmm. That's how they screw you. And then it, if you put too much on it, it's going to be so hard to come back from that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, you yeah. hear about people saying they're in credit card debt and it's yeah. like wild. 
Yeah, you have no idea. Like, you know, if you have a twenty thousand dollar credit limit and you have eighteen thousand dollars on that with twenty percent, that's that's absolutely insane. Yeah. Like, that would be so hard to come back from. So, do you see people often who have a lot of credit card debt? Is it common? Yeah, yeah. So, so actually, uh, um, I had a person that wanted a loan, and like they just had a lot of credit card debt, and they just didn't understand that like they didn't get the loan because of the, it's called like a uh, debt to income ratio. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if you have a lot of debt it's going to be really hard to give you that loan because like, how do we know you're not going to pay us back if you're not paying your credit card company back? You right. know? And, and we just, it's just hard. Cause like if you use a vehicle as collateral, like you put that up there, I, I want a car. I, I, I don't like that confrontational, you know, stuff like that, but um, people just don't really comprehend the whole debt to income ratio mm -hmm. to where like, you know, if you do have a lot of debt, it's going to be really hard to get a loan. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's crazy. All right. Do you have any other questions on credit? No, I have anxiety. But... No. <laughs> <laughs> I have anxiety. <laughs> uh, I'm like, okay, well, I'm like, so I need to pay off all my credit card right now, right this second, no, which I only don't. have like. $200 on there that I haven't paid off, yeah, but still I, that I, like I, freaks I, me I, out now. Sometimes I pay my bill twice a month. I just don't yeah. like seeing 200 or $300 there. So I just right. pay it off. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I agree. I don't like seeing any money on that. Okay. We're going to jump into car loans because I feel like that's a really big thing for people our age. Yeah. They're like finally like buying their own car, not with their parents. Um, okay. Yep. Tell us how you get a car loan. So when, when you graduate, typically we like to go off like two months of uh, income and just like your past two years prior of like where you've lived, um, your job, your income, stuff like that. Um, but typically to buy, to have a car loan, it's um, like I said, you're going to give us that me that two months of income. And then um, let's say a good credit score, like really good that we would qualify that it would be over 720. Um, so if you actually are over 720, we wouldn't need any type of pay stubs and it could get done in like an hour. Um, but if it's anything lower than that, then we just need a little bit more information to prove who you are, the income that you're making and stuff like that. And once you get that car loan, it just, you know, you make that payment every month. And, you know, like we said, if you keep that credit limit where you're supposed to, your credit score is going to jump so fast. It's unbelievable. Like it can literally jump. 40 points in two months. Like that's how oh, fast wow. it can jump, especially if you're in that 680 to 660 range, it can jump so stinking fast. Oh God, that's me. So hopefully mine gets it back that's up me. there. Yeah. It was yeah. over 700. I'm so mad. I'm yep. and, yeah. Oh, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, I'm pretty sure the reason it got dropped, which this will be helpful. If people don't know this is because we pulled it so many times. I think this is the only thing I yeah. can think of. Yeah. So we pulled it to get, yeah. yeah. So yeah, our apartment loan, and then we pulled it for the car loan, and then we pulled it for a house loan, and like that had yeah. to be it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So for um, me, we, uh, I so I have three credit cards. I got my first Discover one when I turned eighteen. I got an Apple one because your brother got one, and they looked really cool. So I kind of wanted yeah. that. And then um, a few years later, so this was like last year, I applied for the Amazon one, and then right after, like two weeks later, I was in. American Eagle and they had a really good deal, like 40% off and an extra 80% off to apply for the credit card. So I applied for that and that dropped my credit score like 30 points Holy for two crap. credit cards in two weeks. And then we applied for our house, which therefore pulled my credit again. So my credit score dropped like 40 points. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Yeah. So it went from 800 to like 740. So now, I mean, it's back to like 760 now, but yeah, my credit score got crapped on for, for like two months. So pretty much, so don't open a bunch of like, credit card that's one thing we should talk we're back on credit scores again i know but um like brady was telling me like one time i wanted to open up a credit card to get like some discount but like don't do that like, don't fall for that at every store because it will like ruin your credit right correct yeah, yeah 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 i mean you can do it every once in a while maybe once a year once every like eight months but yeah don't do a lot of my time and also it affects your credit score if you close a lot of credit cards at a time too oh okay so i mean if you close like uh, my uncle is telling me like, he closed like four credit cards at once. Oh my gosh. Just like, he didn't need a, He didn't need them anymore. And they're sitting in his closet and he's like, I don't want any of them to get hacked. So he just went and like closed or three of them, whatever. Oh my gosh. And it shot his credit score like 40 points. Like, That's crazy. I don't really understand the concept of that, of closing it yeah. doing that, but it does affect your credit score. Well, and then also, um, I don't know what this is behind this, but what if like, 
you're so let's say you don't physically go and close your credit cards but like i know there's some credit cards out there that if they're like go inactive for like a year then they'll just automatically shut down is that is it worse to let them shut down from be, like being inactive or is it so is it worse is one worse or better <laughs> is what i'm trying to say did that make uh, sense well most of the time they're not gonna necessarily close down without your permission but um because they're, they're a little different from a debit card so like through great western bank if you don't use your debit card for a year it's going to get inactive and we have customers calling all the time well why doesn't my debit card working we say well when was the last time you used it well it was over a year ago and it's like okay i guess well waste our money buying you a new debit card that you're never going to use yeah so um but credit cards are a little different um for the most part they won't necessarily shut down on you but like on mine like i have like apple music and, and um like my app iCloud that goes through. So that's what I use for my Apple credit card. I put 15 bucks a month on it and I'll pay for that. And on my Discover, a lot of times I'll do like grocery on that because it has better grocery cash back. And then for mm -hmm. my Amazon, I'll use the Amazon credit card. Um, and I have automatic payments on all of them. But like you said, I typically go in and do it before the automatic payment anyways, right. just because I don't like right. that money Freaks on there. Um, for the most part, they won't, but they will send you like letters being like, hey, um, do you like, do you still want this credit card? Um, like they'll ask if you still want to be active or like if you've lost it or if you forgot about it or right. something like that. Okay. Yeah. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. That is really good to know. Um, what is our next question? We were, we were on the car loans. Were we on the car loans? Yeah. Okay. Did you tell us how to get a car loan or did we get off topic? I don't even remember. Yeah, I kind of did. You know, okay. it's just going in there and telling them what you want and you need to know all of that vehicle information. Um, oh like yeah. Whether it's yeah, good job. The VIN number, um, knowing how much it, how much you're buying it for, um, because like we can tell. So we we use a, and it's called NADA car value. Um, so we'll go through and see, um, like it, it literally goes through a database of like South Dakota, like our region, and seeing how much a 2017 Chevy Malibu is going for. That's what I own. And if these guys are trying to sell it to me for twenty two thousand. But on this NADA value, it's normally showing it goes for sixteen thousand. I'm only going to get the loan for sixteen thousand. Right. So then I would yeah. have to come up with that extra six. But also, I mean, this is kind of getting off topic of banking, but I feel like that's just not a smart decision necessarily either because you're buying a yeah. car that's not worth right. You know. So for my car, it must have been worth that because I didn't have to. We didn't have to put any money down, right? Okay. Right. Yeah, I never even asked exactly you about exactly what it was worth. It was yeah. exactly yeah. that. We're, we're, uh, just about yeah i mean we're not going to give you any more money than what it's worth okay. so if we gave you I, I don't i don't um you can talk about that if you want but let's say we give you twelve thousand and that's what you bought it for that's exactly what it was worth on okay. our nada value cool. so we're not going to give you a cent more than what it was worth what it's valued at on our system which is nice to know honestly yeah, too. it is nice then you're like maybe yep. i should so, get this car so right so you didn't get screwed basically right what I'm telling yeah which is, nice. which is nice yeah totally yeah, for sure Okay, and like how I guess I'm at, you can ask the next question. Sorry. How how long does it take to get to get like approved for a so, loan? Kind of. So some people, you know, it will take a little bit longer. Um, which it, it just stinks. Like I said, it depends on kind of the credit score, like the information that we need. Right. Um, but you know, I've done a I've done a car loan that started at nine and ended at like eleven thirty. So you know, it could take an hour to two. It just depends when we pull the credit score. If we need any pay stubs, like can you get me those pay? today um it can take an hour to two hours if you know that information when you go in um like of the vehicle so like the vin number like i said like that stuff i can get it done in an hour maybe two so that's nice um it all just kind of depends on the information that you are right. providing to me right so pretty much if you have like all your information you can get a car loan in a day or if like you have it online and you email it to me i could just pull everything up online like if all the vehicle information like on you know har motors or mm -hmm. you know something like that so like my loan took a little bit longer because my credit score was a little like on the edge of being like lower than it should have. So I had to give you like extra information for anyone listening. Like I, it took like what a day or two, like longer. It wasn't a big yeah. deal. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was, it was kind of annoying because that was like, you know, I, nor, a lot of times I don't have to go through like some extra steps and yeah. I just, I felt, I was, I was just annoyed because I wanted to get it done for you. And I was just I was yeah. getting so frustrated. I know. And then it was like, one of them was we wanted to get it like that weekend and it was on a Friday. And so oh. then we couldn't like finish it till Monday. And I, Brandon was probably, he said he wasn't annoyed, but Brady and I would be texting each other. I'm like, I don't know. And he's like, I'll call Brandon again. And Brady was calling Brandon like every hour. And he's like, I'm like, are you calling his cell phone or the bank? He's like, he's not answering his cell phone. So I keep calling the bank. So every time he called, like, is Brandon? <laughs> 
<laughs> like <laughs> Brandon there every oh, hour. You can even ask your brother, Cameron. Oh. But, um, I'm really bad at responding to text oh, messages, okay. so it was absolutely nothing personal. Oh, they that's get, so funny. They get they get upset, but I promise there's nothing on that, and we're really not supposed to be on our cell phones per se. Sure. Well, yeah. Um, but. But, uh, yeah, so, yeah, if you, I mean, like, you know, you know, if you call the bank, I'm going to answer. And then it does look like a actual banking conversation. So then someone comes through on, on the phone, which is okay. For yeah, me. that's but, true. <laughs> it was just funny because sure. I'm like, do we know the answer yet? And he's like, nope. I'm like, okay, we're going to call Brian. Oh, that <laughs> just is so funny. <sighs> yeah, yeah. And, and one other thing um, that I really didn't, like, when I first started, I didn't know it was that big of a deal, but, like, the bill of sale, um, that is one thing that, and i have everything um i cannot buy it until what i get called a bill of sale which would be jenna saying i or i jenna am selling this 2016 chevy impala to brandon basic uh for sixteen thousand five hundred dollars like you have right. to have the explanation of the vehicle and who you're selling it to mm -hmm. otherwise they will literally not let you sell it like you can write it on a napkin it doesn't matter right as long as you yeah. sign it and put the information on but they will not sell you that vehicle until that bill of sale comes through that's good that's good <laughs> she yeah. says um okay uh I'm like lost where we were at. Oh, we okay. So we kind of covered this a little bit, but um, and you kind of already said it. But do you need to put any money down? I know you said sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Yeah. So um, like yeah, like you said, sometimes you do. So like, let's say you are buying a car for sixteen, and we give you um fifteen thousand dollars for one. So then you would have to put a thousand dollars down. Um, but also too, like you don't necessarily need to get the whole loan value. So let's say the vehicles were 16,000 but you saved up 4,000 so then you only need the loan for $12,000 mm. therefore it'll save you on your monthly payments right so it's it's kind of a personal you know what you want to do and if you know maybe the full $16,000 for five years doesn't fit in your budget but if you put $2,000 down it'll fit in your budget right your monthly payment and so it's all a personal preference of what you can afford Mm. okay That's that makes sense yeah, that is really um just talking about my car i'm just gonna keep using that for like reference so, like general for our loan like the murano clearly crapped out and we yep. like weren't ready to buy a car so they have money saved up yeah so we didn't like put any money down on it oh yeah which is really nice that if you nice. have to do that like right obviously i i don't know if i told you this brandon but like our goal was to save money for a year and then buy the car cash but like that was not it able to happen just, yeah i wasn't yeah religious. so then we just we didn't any money down which is nice if you have to do that right you know? and 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 one word of advice that i have for any type of vehicle is don't ever get a car loan over five years five years absolute max because i mean right now it's a weird time where cars literally like are gaining value which is the weirdest time in history yeah. that that's never happened but right. cars was so much value and if you're paying 500 dollars a month for six years for something that's losing value that is such a waste of money have it at five max and if you can pay more pay more but never go over five year loan for a car okay mm -hmm. so you can go over five like i thought you could only do like a three or like a five like i or I, in between there, there I didn't... Some, so for newer vehicles within a five-year range you can some car dealerships like through their company like sometimes they'll like pick a credit bureau and you can get a loan them sometimes they go up to seven years what I, I worked at one yeah i worked at one you could get up to seven year loans i didn't know that was even an option it, it shouldn't be an option <laughs> uh, but but uh some people will do six but i five or newer that's, okay. that's what i'll recommend to every single person buying yeah. a car yeah <laughs> wow that's crazy yeah it's it's weird i never would have guessed seven years was actually a thing could you, like, because I know that everyone usually does, like, the three or the five, like Cameron said, but, like, if you walked in and you were like, well, I'm kind of rich, but not, like, rich enough to buy, like, flat cash, could you be like, could you just give me, like, a one-year loan? Like, can oh, yeah. you go can that you little? So, no, they normally will do three, but they're, unless if you're at a bad bank, uh, you're not going to have a payoff penalty, an early payoff penalty. So, um, like, I've had, I've had some customers do, like, a, a two thousand, like, they need two thousand dollars for something so they'll put like a four-wheeler atv or you know something a little cheaper up for collateral and then they'll do a two-year loan on for two thousand or three-year loan for two thousand dollars 
and their payments are 80 bucks a month and they'll put $200 a month towards the loan and they'll get it paid off in a year. So you oh, can always do that. That option is always, always there. So. so like we took out a five year loan mm -hmm. and like, I pray it does not take us five years to pay right. off our car. You know what yeah, I mean? Sure. So then we have Absolutely. the, yeah, we have the option on our um, great Western bank app or whatever to like pay on the premium. Okay. So like, cause, cause he was, yeah. I was saying like, what if we do like a three year and you're like, well, then your payments will be higher each month. Like what if Brady and I got into like some issue and we're like, Oh, like a $400 right. payment's a lot better than like a six or $700 payment. Right. So we did the five yeah. year, but then we'll like pay, we'll like add more to the premium. Right. To pay As you go. Absolutely. Which, which is, which is really smart. And also too, um, let's say you do want to do the five year loan. Um, like let's say three years ago when interest rates were higher, COVID hit, uh, is what a lot of people started doing was refinancing their car loans, house loans, all of that, because interest rate, rates drop so much. Mm -hmm. So like, let's say next year, Cameron, um, you build your credit score to 760 and, yeah. you, and you're like, okay, I still have three more years left on this loan. You could, if you wanted to, you could refinance your car loan and you could drop your interest rate from, you know, eight to four. Like that's, okay. it's, it's crazy yeah. how much you can do that when your credit score goes up. Mm -hmm. Which would save so probably that, like thousands of dollars in the end yeah. on interest you yeah. know especially like, especially for house loans like we had yes. up the wazoo people refinancing house loans i bet because those are i mean those are 30-year loans right. like that's huge yep. yep wow all right we should move on to house loans um okay but <laughs> kind of the same questions under the car loan like do you have to put money down on a house loan so they they do expect you um i believe three per the absolute minimum um, okay. but it's also everything applies to your income so if you know if i make twenty five hundred dollars a month and emily makes twenty five hundred dollars a month but we're trying to get a house loan for four hundred thousand dollars it's just the math doesn't right. add up right you know so um we actually my wife worked a lot in high school and college so you know when we graduated um i paid off my debt my school debt which was like 28k and then, um, you know, we still have like 30 grand saved up. So we put a pretty good um, down payment on our house. And, you know, our payment is going to be right in the range that works for us. But um, you don't have to put 20% or 10%. Okay. You can put 5% as long as it is in your your price range. So if you're making $2,000 a month and you want to put 5% down on a house and your house payment is going to be $1,800 a month, it mm -hmm. just doesn't seem right. logical to 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 go through with that because you would never have any extra money in, right. your, in your pocket. Right. And what do they say? Like how much your um housing should be? What percentage of your income? Do you One know? One third is yeah, what I, they I, usually say. I well, at least like thirty percent. Thirty percent. Thirty or forty, like combined in the house. So like. Right. Yeah. Um, Emily and my payment. So like. When you build, when you buy a house, it's a little different than renting. Like it sucks having to pay for everything. Yeah. So you know you have like your all of your heat and electricity, your water, your garbage, and then you also are paying um, insurance and mm -hmm. you are paying taxes. So like Emily and I total are paying like you know right around that twelve hundred dollar mark for everything um, compared to you know when I was in college rooming with my buddies, I was paying three hundred and sixty bucks a month. So, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's a little different in that aspect, but, you know, just becoming adults, it was, it was pretty cool to, you know, just really grow up and go through the process. Totally. Be able yeah. to help. Yeah. And be able to help others when they have, come in and have questions. It's, it's really just good to know, I guess. Yeah, totally. Man, you saying that makes me feel so here in Sioux Falls, everything costs more. <laughs> so after Brady so and I more. pay, well, we pay for like everything here. So it's like right. sewer garbage, our rent, um, after we pay for everything pay for it, all of that at your apartment yeah yeah but which, the apartment comp the our apartment's 880 for a one bedroom apartment right. which is actually like in a good location like it's actually yeah, a really good price it's a really good price so after brady and i right. pay everything wi-fi um heat electricity it's 1200 dollars a month too mm -hmm. yeah so, and that's just crazy because like that's you know yeah. like that could be for your house someday exactly you know? And that's why we want to yeah. buy a house. That's right. why we're like renting is yeah. literally just yeah. like throwing money into yes. a hole. It yeah. is throwing it money is. into a hole. Yeah. Yeah. So, absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's why yeah. we. Yeah. But I mean, it's honestly kind of nice because I lived at the same um complex before they did, and it was honestly kind of nice. And now at the house that I live at, I have 
even though I'm renting the house, I have to pay all that stuff on top of my rent anyway. Yeah. And it's honestly kind of like a little bit nice because you have to go through that process of setting up those accounts and calling those people and being like, hey, I need electric set up this yeah. time and this time and yada, yada, yada. And I feel like it's yeah. almost kind of like baby steps towards when you're going to get a house someday, you'll have a yeah. little bit better knowledge instead of just going from you had to do nothing except make one like except make one payment a month to, mm -hmm. hey, I actually know how to do all this stuff and run a whole entire household. Right. And I and I agree because like in an apartment, you know, like when we when we moved in, um, our dishwasher stopped working. So oh. who has to replace the dishwasher? Right. Uh, you know, but in an apartment complex, your dishwasher or your washing machine breaks down, they come in and fix it for you. And, yeah. and, and you know, that's just part of the, the deal that you have in your contract. But when you own a house, you're you're responsible for any type of mishaps or painting and you know, all of that stuff. Yeah. And it's just how it is, you know. It's just yeah. That extra like you said, you start off with those baby steps and then you become the adult and do all the crappy stuff, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. All right, so um, who can even get a house loan? Obviously, it's a little bit bigger of a deal than a car. So kind of walk us through that. Like, who can get one? Um, like, how good does your credit have to be? All that stuff. How much so, money do you have to make? <laughs> so, so for a house loan, it is a little more... Um, informative that you need to provide to them. So they will pull both, you know, like Emma and I, they pull both of our credit score. They need two years worth of tax returns and W-2s. Ooh. Um, and, and when you do that, uh, they'll take that and all your income. And uh, when, when you apply for the loan, like you have to let them know of any outside income. So like if, you know, I owe my, I owe my father-in-law some money. So like they want, wanted to know that kind of stuff, even though they really don't need it. Um, but so that was kind of annoying. But anyway, so when you apply, it's, it's kind of the same concept for the credit score. But uh, with interest rates being so low, like for a car, it's, for instance, I think the lowest credit score or the lowest uh, interest rate we have for a car is like maybe 4, 4.5. Okay. But for a house on a 30-year loan, you're sitting like our our interest rate is 2.875. So like it's insanely low compared yeah, to right. you know, even four years ago. Wow. And and for money down, um, you know, at, at least three to 5%. And then uh, you'll have to pay uh, for clothing costs, mm -hmm. which is typically like, crap, I think it's 3%. So mm -hmm. like, we're going to pay, you know, five, $6,000 just in closing costs, which doesn't sound like very much fun to me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, you, you do have that. So you always have to be um, open and willing to like make sure you have that money in your savings account or in your checking account or something so you can pay that off because that expense will be there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then I had another question on that. What was that? I don't know what it was. I lost it. Okay. Well, that's fine. Maybe, maybe you'll think about it a little bit later. Yeah. Um, okay. So can you explain South Dakota first time home buyers? Yeah, so she was like, "What's so that?" Like each, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, "What?" Each state, each state has like a home buyer's insurance uh, or a home buyer like kind of thing that they promote for first time homeowners because they want that um, people moving in. They want people coming in and stuff. So when you do buy your house, um, typically for first time homeowners. Uh, they'll give you a lower interest rate than other people if you if you can prove that you've never owned a house. So with our interest rate being that low, like like you know, for our next house, like you don't have that opportunity to get that first time homeowners. It's it's just a really cool uh, program that South Dakota puts on uh, that will help you get a smaller interest rate and help you like qualify easier for a loan. Um, and also too, something I'd like to point out, like if you do have a really good job. You know, if you're making six thousand dollars a month and your home payment would be a thousand dollars a month on a thirty year loan, um, you can always do a fifteen year loan as well. That option's always there. Mm. Um and like our loan for a thirty year loan is two point eight seven five and for a fifteen year loan it was like two point one seven five wow. or something like that. But but like we had talked about earlier, uh, what Cameron said, uh, she could have done a three year loan on her car, but what happens if one month you get in a tight situation and you can't make your payment and mm -hmm. I didn't want to be you know like that it just wouldn't be a good feeling so um, our goal is to pay our house off in 15 to 20 years but um like there might be some months where we only make the minimum payment if mm -hmm. you know our car breaks down or we have a big you know something go wrong um we always will be okay because we know we can afford that $1,200 a month with both of our incomes 
Right. But going back to the first time homeowners, it's just a really good program that South Dakota puts on. Helps to get smaller interest rates. And um, it is typically, I think it's 30 year loans for the most part, but um, it's just a really good program. And I don't know if this went through, but Cameron, this might be something you want to look into as well. Um, and I'm not saying I'm necessarily for Biden, but Biden put a first is trying to pass a first time homeowners tax credit for fifteen thousand oh, dollars. So wow. if you buy your house, um, I, he's trying to pass it to where you basically get fifteen thousand dollars for buying your house. Wow. I don't know if it passed or not, but you can look into it or not. But it was pretty big within the last three or four months of him trying to pass that. So wow. um, that option might be there for you as well. I'm not sure if it will be, but. I mean, I kind of hope it is. Yeah. I wouldn't mind that, but, but okay. um, he's trying to pass that. Maybe you said this, but I don't think you did. First time homebuyers in South Dakota, it's no money down, right? Yeah. Did you say that? I don't know. I, I, I'm not 100% sure if it's no money down, Um, but I, I'm i thinking it is still one to three or like three to five percent, I think. So, you know, on $100,000, that's only $3,000 down. Oh, okay. So, okay. Because uh, it's... So, it's either none or really low. Cause so Brady and I almost got a house kind of, um, we put in our offer and we didn't get the offer, but we had figured out after closing costs because with the market, everyone's like making you pay the closing costs right now. Um, the seller is, and then yeah. with, uh, everything we were like, okay, it'll be like $6,000 is all we we're going to have to put down. Um, so yeah, I can't remember if it was zero money down and that was other expenses or if, yeah, but either way, really low. Yeah. Right. Down. It, it is really low. Yeah. Like, like they always say, do you need 20% down to do this? It's like, you don't need 20%. No. Like yeah. if it fits in your budget to do 5%, do 5%. Yeah. Um, but the one thing that there is, is um, until you get to that 20%, you have what's called uh, homeowners and like an extra, like $50 a month. It's called like homeowners um, insurance. It, it, that's not the exact words, but you'll pay like an extra 50 bucks a month until you get to that 20%. Mm. I don't remember the exact word. For, but um, that is there, uh, which is really not that big of a deal okay. for the most part. But you will have to do that until you get to your 20%. Okay. Um, Because I think it's really funny when people say like, well, it's not funny. I mean, I people are just trying to be smart sometimes. But I also think sometimes they don't realize and they're like, oh, I have to save for a house. I have to save for a house. And for five years, they save for a house, save like 30 grand. I'm like, you didn't have to do that, you know? And did you really, did you really save like, because you're paying your rent. Because you're paying your rent yeah. anyway. So, like, yes. yeah, you might have. You're losing money. Exactly. You, might, you might have, like, quote unquote, saved. You might have budgeted a little bit better. You might have yeah. not bought, you yeah. know, all of your extra stuff. You might have been a little more frugal. But in the end, did you really save any money? Because you've literally just right. been throwing money into a hole right. by renting for this entire time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yes. You get it. <laughs> I love it. Brandon's like, preach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Okay, now we're going to jump down. We have some listener questions for you. Um, first one is, where does my money actually go? Like when they put it in the bank. <laughs> yeah, so so when you put, it's, it's just kind of weird. Because like, you know, there's days where people will bring us $8,000 in cash. And you put it in the bank. And it, it's just weird because like, you know, I even saw a TikTok video on this. Like, where does my money go? And, and I just wanted to see different people's perspective of like what they say. Yeah. So, you know, like you... And I'm, you know, that $8,000 that you gave to me, I'm literally giving that out to the next 40 people, but it don't, <laughs> that's kind of hard to explain and like, <laughs> literally giving it to the next because, 40 people, <laughs> you know, there's days I give out, you know, thousands of dollars to customers, but there's, then there's the next day where I don't give out any and people bring me thousands of dollars. So, you know, that the money is always being circulated to different places and like, it, it's just I don't know. It's kind of hard for me to even wrap my own head around it because yeah. like there's so much currency coming in and giving out loans and, you know, giving this person 15,000, this person, uh, I don't necessarily do house loans, but then giving that person $200,000 for their house, you know, stuff like that. So mm -hmm. the money is literally, it never stops moving. And it like, you guys wouldn't even believe just like, you know, there's times where people are bringing us a thousand dollars worth of quarters and it's just like, yeah, yeah, it takes forever. It sucks. But, <laughs> you know, it, it's it's there. It takes forever to wrap those, but especially dimes. If you bring me dimes, I, I'll just give them to Sarah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, that's, that's funny. funny. Yeah, that's really so funny. funny. Money, money in the world is, like, something, like, so super interesting. Because if you think about, like, um, like the world, the, all of, like, the world's collective debt 
is like so much more than actual like physical money that is in the world. So everyone's like, how can you have more debt? And it's like, well, if I loan you $10 and you're like, okay, I'll pay you back this $10. And then you loan it to Brady, you have $20 worth of debt, but you still only have one $10 bill. Right. So, and I feel like, like money is such an interesting thing once you actually start digging into it and like semi understanding it is so fascinating and also so like mind boggling Mm -hmm. or like exchange rate like yeah like going from like here to europe or like anything like that i just like it's so exchange rates get me i get so i like i just get so confused about anything but those like few times where i wrap my mind around like a tiny little bit i'm like oh that makes sense it doesn't happen very often but (laughs) (laughs) okay so what would be some advice on budgeting and i feel like this question is like really open end like you could probably take it a lot of different directions but like what Someone who just wants a few, like, tips on budgeting, like, what would you tell them? Yeah, so, like, like, I'm just Mm. savings account and a checking account. And the concept of a savings account is to, you know, put money in there and, like, you know, just kind of grow it and grow it. So, like, let's say your dishwasher breaks out. Then you you have money there, so then it doesn't feel like it's coming out of your your paycheck that week. Like, Mm. you, you could put it in there. But we have some customers that have savings accounts and checking accounts that'll literally transfer money over every single day from their savings to their check It's like, like, why, how do you not understand like <laughs> how much money you need? So, so, um, within the last few years, um, I, cre- cause I really, I'm like our money guy. Like I kind of created our budget and stuff. So like every single month I kind of did averages of like what, like this is when we were still renting, like what our rent is, our average for like our MDU bill, our, um, um, internet bill, like all of that. Like I put everything on a spreadsheet. I put how much it was, put kind of our average monthly income. So then I was like, okay, so we normally spend $200 on groceries. So there's that. And then this, and then this, and then this. So this all comes out to $1,600 and we make Mm $4,000. So then let's put $1,000 into the savings account and then put $200 into maybe stocks. And then the other $200 we have to spend on whatever we want. So like we had like what's called like our spending something. So like our Amazon, maybe we want to go to Sioux Falls for a weekend or something. Um, so we would always have like a hundred to two hundred dollars worth of spending money, mm-hmm. but we always were putting money back into our savings account because when our dishwasher broke down and we had to put seven hundred dollars down towards it, mm-hmm. it was it was sitting there. We didn't have to go ask my parents for seven hundred bucks because we we spent it all that that week when we got our right. paycheck. Okay, you know, and it, it's just it's just a discipline thing like because if you ever you know want to become debt free and you ever want to um you know grow money you know you know whether it's stocks or putting it into a Roth IRA or something like that you have to do at least a little bit of budgeting like Mm -hmm. know where your money's going into because if you're spending all of your money like every single paycheck that you get on worthless junk like (laughs) you're never you will never become debt free and that's just it, it stinks to say but so many people don't budget and i see it every single day and i just want to go yell at them and help them so <laughs> it, it just stinks yeah no i think that's really good advice yeah, that is really really good advice. yes that's awesome um next one what oh well i mean he already kind of, answered his advice on savings yeah really. okay um how do i pay off my debt well <laughs> do you have any more <laughs> any more to add i know you kind of explained that all but yeah do you have anything else to add to so, that? So I guess one thing that I would do, I, I do want to touch up on the savings accounts. I would always say like, especially like, you know, for Cameron and Brady, they are done with college. They both have incomes. So like every week or every month or whatever, I would make sure I'd be putting, you know, at least a, make make up a per, certain percentage that makes sense to you guys, so whether it's 10% mm-hmm. into that savings account. So if a trouble does come or your car breaks down or something like that, you can pay for new tires. Right? Right. You can pay for you know, something like that. So I would always try to keep at least like $3,000 in that savings yeah. account. So okay. if something were to happen, something unexpected, like you have that money sitting there. Mm-hmm. So it's there and it's ready to go because on the app, it takes one little click to your checking account to get right. it transferred over and that money's there for you, which is really nice. I've done that before. And we all have. <laughs> as have I. As have I was I like, me. oh and no, we got to transfer. Nice. <laughs> yeah. yep, yep. And, and to pay off the debt, you know, just see what you owe. Like, um, you know, Cameron said for her car, she has that five-year loan. So, um, you can literally just go to Google and type in a loan calculator and see how much you owe every week. And just, you know, an extra hundred dollars a month will get your, it, you know, four months less. So like, for instance, on my house, um, my total bill, I think I'd say right around that $1,200, 
Yeah, let's say I pay an extra, and I'm not necessarily going to, well, let's say I pay an extra $500 a month, which would be about 50% more. Um, it would knock my loan from 30 years to 15 years. Right. Like you just wouldn't believe how much interest that's paying off. Right. And it's just putting that extra money. Like, you know, like when Emily works at the lodge, for instance, you know, those months we can maybe put an extra $300 towards the house or something like that. But it's just, it's just, especially for debt, it's budgeting, mm -hmm, you know, yeah. and just being responsible, especially with credit cards, you mm -hmm. know, a card, card debt is different from a credit card. Like we had said, credit cards, 20%. If you have a lot of credit card debt, like you need to bear down and Just you know, you shouldn't it. be going on trips. You shouldn't right. be doing all this stuff. If you have eighteen thousand dollars worth of credit card debt, you need to be disciplined and yes. just work hard, work extra and get that paid off. But like right. with a, with your car, you know, just put an extra hundred dollars a month if you got a bonus, you know, something like that. Yeah. And you wouldn't believe how fast it, it can trim down, even with an extra two hundred dollars a month. It's it's unbelievable. So yeah. it just depends on what kind of debt you have. If it's credit card. You got to be disciplined and do nothing. You literally just have to yeah. just pay it off as fast as you can because like 20% accrues very fast. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. That, is crazy. that was really good. I have like, I feel more knowledgeable, but I also just have like so much anxiety. Just about like, being, I gotta get my life About being together. an adult now. I'm just like, oh my gosh. And like, I don't know, maybe. And the whole thing is like, Cause like pretty, I finally got like an actual credit card because everyone's like, well, you need it to build credit, right? It's like the smart adult thing to do, but I'm terrified, like terrified of credits and like the whole credit world. So, but now you learn things. Yeah. Now I learn things. Yeah. I still have a little bit of anxiety. I really do. So Talk this episode was good for you. Too. Yeah. It was good for me talking about any kind of money yeah. kind of gives me anxiety, but yeah, I feel yeah. like I have a better grasp yeah. on things. And one last thing I would like to say about credit cards. Credit cards can be the absolute best thing in the world. It's, right. it's literally free money if it's used right. But if it's used wrong, it can literally screw your whole life up. Yeah. It right. can. So that's, that's where the whole discipline and, you know, just making sure that you are making your payments and not putting more than 30%. Because if, if, the, if you don't have the money in your bank account, what makes you think that you can pay off your credit card? Right. Especially with the interest, you know? So, like, if you're if you're buying a plane ticket for $900, but you have $400 in the bank, mm. what makes you think you're going to pay that off? Right, so yeah. So, it's just, it's just all discipline and just keeping yourself accountable because if you don't do that, it could literally ruin, like, you see people all the time, like, you know, like, you've seen, like, commercials of, like, how to get rid of the credit card debt and, like, call this number now. And it's just, like, like I would hope that you would never get to that point and you can hold yourself right. accountable. And just, right. you know, so you can enjoy life without having to pay 20% back on everything, you know? Yeah, right. yeah, totally. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. Um, Is there anything else you wanted to let people know, Brandon? Uh, no, I don't, I don't think I didn't so. know if you had any other little advice you were just, like, dying to say. <laughs> no, I, mean, okay. I feel like I kind of got everything off my chest. Good. We just helped you vent and just get it out. Just I'm just kidding. Out. I love talking about it. I love helping people with this type of stuff. It's a lot of fun. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, did you have anything else no. you wanted to add to it? Um, if you guys have any other questions, I'm sure Brandon would love to answer them. So you can just like reach Actually, out. Actually, I do have I do have one more thing. What? What? The freaking school districts need to start teaching this crap before you get to your junior year of college and your finance class. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They should be teaching you this in high school. What about renting apartments and like what happens when you buy a house and what a credit card can do? Because like there was a girl that I talked to, um, she was in college and I said, oh, you should really start looking into credit cards. She said, no, my mom says credit cards are bad. And it's like, ah, I'm not, ah. Gonna, not gonna respond, but they, they need to teach you the goods and the bads and what credit cards can do. Because why do you think so many people get in credit card debt? Exactly. So them. They didn't know. Ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Stupid. I know. It, it gets me kind of worked up because it's literally the biggest thing in life is credit credit score and paying money and debt. And they don't teach you any of it in high school. No, I know. Yeah. It's literally it's ridiculous. I don't even know what to do. Like talk to like right legislator. Or, I don't know what you even do. Or investing. <laughs> or investing. I want to invest some stuff. Have no idea how to invest um, some stuff. I think we should get Keelan on here and talk about the investments. Because yeah, he's like Keelan and I talk stocks every single day i know so, you guys have a group message yeah, i'm like who are you texting he's like i'm texting the i don't even know what your guys's group name is but like ah, just drop it. Yeah. Yeah. um well next episode next episode we'll have the guys on to talk about stocks, stocks and yeah. investing and stuff yes but. we would love that <laughs> okay well thank you so much this was great i feel like i learned 
I like forget stuff. So every time I right. talk money with people, I feel like I like retain more retain information. More, yeah. yeah. That's so good. this is awesome. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day. Absolutely. All right. Well, thanks. All right, thank you, ladies. Bye. Bye. You too.